It's been quite the afternoon at the Algarve International Circuit with the four hours of Algarve getting underway earlier on this afternoon. And it was a killer getaway for Kiffin Simpson ahead of a 30 or 40 car field, 39 cars directly behind the Barbadian driver. And he squeaked through turns one, two and three safely. But then the first major twist after just under half an hour of the race gone, the heavens opened and a number of cars, including Sally Yolich, would go skating off towards the gravel. Sally dropping those rear tyres into the gravel trap at turn eight, and that meant that that car was heavily delayed and would go a number of laps down. Meanwhile, side-by-side -side action for what was third position at the time, and Vlad Lomko up the inside there of Manuel Maldonado. How about this for the GT battle? Five of the entered of the 12 uh, entered cars all together for the opening probably 45 or 50 minutes. Ben Tuck in the red Aston Martin, slightly quicker than the four cars ahead of him, and he would eventually lead. However, on wet weather tyres in drying conditions. We think he uh, rather cooked those treaded tyres and then didn't have any pace at all to fight Ryan Hardwick with, and Ryan eventually would get back ahead of the British driver in the TF Sport Aston Martin. Car guy with a decent start to their race in the hands of Tageshi Kimura, but uh, a focus uh, on the Duquesne car. And then this moment at the top of the hill at turn 10 for Jonas Reed. Still can't quite get to the bottom of exactly what happened to Reed Jr but uh, an awful lot of damage done to the 99 prototype car and it remains to be seen whether that will take further part in the weekend. Side-by-side -side action between Gianmarco Liberato and Matt Griffin and in the end the 77 Porsche squeezed ahead of the 55 Ferrari to take that position. Then great dicing between Algarve Pro Racing and Duquesne team. This was when the 30 car was being driven by Nico Pino and he slotted up the inside of James Allen's 25 car. James so slow because he was on wet weather tyres in severe, severely drying conditions. Then a, a big, big moment in the race which would take the 13 car out of championship contention. It may also have done way too much damage to the number 13 car, perhaps an oil line that broke and oil uh, then spewed across the, the hot engine bay of the 13 car, may well have finished it for the weekend, let's hope not, but it will need to be in qualifying format tomorrow, this being a double header. We got back racing again, Neil Jarney was all of a sudden assaulted though by David Perel in the number 30 car, that was Gilles Duquesne's reaction to it all, and sadly it would take the number 30 car out of the contention of a race victory. Tristan Voti had a moment at the top of the hill at turn 13 that then cleaned out Malta Jakobsen, who also was on course to potentially fight for the race victory, and then this fight that will live so long in the memory between Alex Lynn for Algarve Pro Racing and Ollie Jarvis in the number 22 United Auto Sports car. The reaction as United took the race lead about 15 minutes away from the chequered flag, wind the clock forward, and Ollie Jarvis did not make a further mistake. Alex Lynn, sadly, although he could match the speed of his fellow Brit, there was no opportunity to get through. Virtually and every United. possible outcome I'll have to map out now between now and uh, Sunday evening. There's confirmation of the overall classification, at least at the provisional stage. 120 laps completed and a win for Phil Hansen, Marino Sato and Oli Jarvis by 0.8 of a second over the team's trophy champions. Again, provisionally, but I reckon they have an unassailable lead with 89 points to the name of Kiffin Simpson, James Allen and Alex Lynn. Third position to Panis Racing and we'll of course see all three of those cars on the podium very shortly. LMP2 Pro-Am won post-race by Cool Racing's number 37 for Alex Kwani, Malta Jakobsen and Nicola Lapierre.